fact that our membership is growing each year, that shows that people have confidence in us and want to be part of that confidence. Without a viable, well-resourced association, it's very difficult to have a professional, well-regarded industry. Uh, and when you go and talk to government, you need that sort of power behind you. The association provides important business development opportunities for members through participation in our trade show, magazine, awards to industry programs and export activities. We also work with government to ensure that any new regulations have the benefit of robust industry input. The big magnitude of our membership is actually small to medium enterprises and by them having a strong voice in the form of the association, uh, it, means a, it means a lot to them. They, they can rely on us to take up their fight. In 1972, there were several deaths involving modified motor cars on Victoria. The Victorian State Government enacted hurriedly, without any contact with the automotive aftermarket industry, motor vehicle modification regulations which effectively prevented the use of any non-standard components on any motor vehicle. Use of any non-standard components on any motor vehicle. Basically the rules related to ride heights, tyres and wheels and exhaust systems, but everything got caught up in the morass. This had a terrible effect on our business uh, and any, anybody else in the field. I needed to defend myself and I guess other businesses. I gathered about 20 Melbourne and Sydney business people together, but I don't think they really felt that how devastating this could be if in fact uh, you know, it continued. Connections with the government took some time, but ultimately the AAA became a one-stop shop for the performance and aftermarket industry because prior to its development there was no one for the government to talk to. So they were really appreciative of, of having one organisation as the mouthpiece for the general industry. The late Terry Marnie, who was a really skilled marketing guy, was a great support to Graham and he uh, and 15 other people, 14 other people became the steering committee. Terry Marnie ultimately became the president. I was one of the uh, uh, national councillors and uh, ultimately went through all the legals and the Aftermarket Association was born in, I believe, 1980. Yeah, Graham uh, Rose worked as the executive director as, long, as well as running uh, the shows uh, and, and the magazine. But for the Aftermarket Association, uh, everybody worked on an honorary basis, including Graham. Alternated between Melbourne and Sydney, uh, uh, as I recall, on a quarterly basis for three-year terms. And I think I put in uh, three of those terms. I followed in some pretty good footsteps at the Association. Uh, people like Graham Rose was an entrepreneur and, uh, and the right person to get to the Association up and running. Uh, George Weatherston uh, was very good on the technical side of it uh, and then my immediate predecessor David Wright uh, really internationalised the association and led our, our export drive. The biggest weakness when I joined was our resources. Um, we had limited funds, we, uh, we had limited staff, there was two support staff plus myself. Um, so to be able to drive the association forward to improve our member services we really needed to, uh, to look at hard, hard at uh, the way we were doing things and the way we needed to do things into the future. Uh, I was fortunate that the National Council um, shared a lot of the views that I, I had in terms of what needed to be done. Um, and being able to gain control of the magazine uh, and to start our own trade show certainly helped us deal with the, the financial uh, issues of the association and led to us being able to provide the sorts of services and the sorts of staffing uh, that were needed to be able to drive us forward into the future. We'd been talking to our members about the trade show for some time. Um, our strategy was to, uh, to get 30 foundation exhibitors. Um, that happened very easily, again because we were addressing the issues that they wanted us to address. And very shortly thereafter to actually sell out the show as well. They were very happy that we'd taken control of the trade show. The success of the first trade show was like a coming of age. Um, everything about it was right, we'd spent a lot of time talking to our members so they were right behind it and it became the basis of our confidence to move forward 
in our discussions with regulators, our relationship with members, everything about it both at a member level and at the national office was about a new success and a new era for the association. At the time I joined the uh, association, we had around 900 members and uh, we've grown significantly since that, that period of time. Many of the members uh, that we have in the association are engaged in the manufacture of either bull bars and or suspension components. We've been very successful at uh, lobbying government departments. Bull bar regulations and if you like the uh, regulations in um, lifted vehicles and things like uh, suspension changes that were going to be inflicted upon uh, the aftermarket in general, we've been able to uh, stop that and I believe that there's going to be new, re uh, new regulations come out that em embrace our recommendations. When I first joined the uh, AAAA National Council, the, the government still identified the automotive industry basically as the car companies. We now have a very active uh, participation with government departments and also regulatory bodies and uh, as such they refer to us now rather than us having to catch up and talk to them anyway. Today the AAAA represents 1300 companies nationally representing manufacturers, importers, wholesalers, resellers and retailers of automotive aftermarket parts, accessories, workshop tools and equipment. We also represent the four-wheel drive parts and accessories sector through the Australian Four-Wheel Drive Industry Council and the performance racing and tuning sector through the PRTC. Essentially, I've seen my role as building on the great work of all the people that have come before me, um, really focusing our efforts on, um, on strengthening the trade show and the magazine and making sure that they continue to respond to our members' needs and that they're relevant as today as, as they were when we first launched them. And I think the major focus, certainly in the last uh, two or three years, is on really lifting our government relations activity because ultimately that's, I believe, is essentially what the association is all about and we need to make sure that we can positively influence government behaviour to make sure that our sector continues to uh, grow and prosper into the future. In my tenure, uh, I've been very proud of the fact that in the last 12 months we've been able to uh, lobby for intervention over emissions regulation, suspension and bull bars uh, and what we've been able to do is, is actually get the, the Minister to overrule their department and order uh, working groups to review the regulation and in all of the cases uh, the regulation would have had a detrimental impact on our members. If uh, we stand by and let poor government regulation go through in any jurisdiction around the world or in Australia then um, we run the risk of uh, eventually being regulated out of existence. In addition, we have the added challenge of taking up the fight to the vehicle manufacturers to ensure that the independent aftermarket gets access to technical and diagnostic information to be able to repair and service today's modern vehicles. This is a subject of our Choice of Repairer campaign which was launched in April last year and whilst we've been doing a lot of work behind the scenes, we will start to see over the next 6 to 12 months this become a very public uh, fight and one that I think is critical uh, for the survival of the independent aftermarket. Today the association represents a sector that turns over $5 billion annually, employs 30,000 Australians and exports $600 million a year in uh, product. I've seen the association grow every year and uh, I believe the directions that we've taken with our uh, activities with government um, are outstanding features for our membership going forward. So I have every confidence in the association for a long period of time. To see the role that, uh, that Stuart and his team has, has uh, undertaken, the, the results, the continued growth in membership is fantastic. Really, the membership of the association is another form of insurance, of which you wouldn't run a business without insurance. I'm very happy with what I've achieved over the last four years during my tenure at the AAAA. Our membership's grown 30%. We've just come off our best retention year ever. What we've now got is what the industry wanted, which is one great show every two years. 
Our magazine is the market leading publication in the industry. We've grown our uh, market research activities and we've built a range of uh, member services and support activities. Having said that, there are many challenges on the horizon, but I am confident that the AAA is in a better position now and better resourced and, and better organised to be able to meet those challenges and take advantage of the opportunities that will present themselves. I believe that in 60 years we'll be presiding over an aftermarket that is as strong and forward-looking as it is today.